particles like these so fast with me. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words, but no one can deny the fact that quantum theory works. What are the first five pictures in this video? So these five here. What do these five have in common? And what is different from these five pictures when compared to this picture here, this one here? Well, if you mentioned or you, if you thought that they might be having transistors in common, that you're right. So all of these use transistors in some form or another. Whereas the one in red, so this would be your very first computer. And the first computer was actually not working with a transistor. It was working with a thermionic device. So a thermionic triode. And you can see the size of the computer. It was massive, right? That size of that computer has less sort of technology or less power than a modern sort of smartphone. And so a modern smartphone, which is the size of your pocket, is more powerful than that massive computer. One of the reasons why is because of these transistors, which we've been able to produce on a large scale ever since the 1960s and onwards. And they have revolutionized our society. They have completely changed our society. So these ones are responsible for much of our modern electronics. So most of your electronics we have transistors in some form or another. And the best example would be a computer, but also your phones and your cameras and everything else has transistors in it. The reason why I mention all of this is because Dopo itself says identify data, gather, uh, process and analyze information and use available evidence to assess the impact of the invention of transistors on society with particular reference to their use in microchips and microprocessors. Right? So first of all, what I just mentioned now, obviously since transistors are sort of the, the foundation of modern electronics, they're going to have a very big impact, right? So the impact is absolutely massive. The impact is very big. Is And again, that big is the understatement. Using the word massive is probably more appropriate. Without transistors, we would have a completely different type of lifestyle than we do at the moment. And the reason why is because the second part, which says, talk about in particular reference to their use in microchips, and microprocessors. So how we use transistors and microchips and microprocessors is what really changed modern electronics. And what microchips and microprocessors are, it's just a, we often call them the integrated, so that word, integrated, integrated circuits. So what you can imagine, I'm just going to draw like random piece. What you can imagine this to be is a microchip, right? So a microchip. And I have a picture on your left hand side of a microchip. Just one of these, you've probably seen one. And they're basically in, in much of your simple devices, such as, as your very simple camera, such as one of these ones here, or simple similar devices. They would have these microchips. What these microchips are, they are these integrated circuits or ICs. And within one of these microchips, what you can usually find is you might find in different circuits, which are often usually connected by, for example, copper wire. Right? So this might be a circuit here. We might have a positive terminal here, a negative terminal right there, and electricity will flow through it. This would be a wire, and there might be a lamp as well connected to that circuit. And this would take up quite a bit of space. Right? So this would be just one circuit, but this circuit itself would already take up quite a bit of space. But if you think about a camera, if you want to have lots of these circuits in a camera that take up that much space, that wouldn't make any sense. That would be too big. So what we do when it comes to a microchip, what a microchip is, it's an integrated circuit. So it's tiny circuits, which are, so you can imagine this here, the whole lamp circuit, to maybe be just one of those tiny dots. And they're all connected together. So there's going to be lots of different functions on that microchip. And they're all connected together. And the one thing that often connects them together is, for example, your transistors, which can act like a switch or can act like a amplifier. Right? So they're often transistors are all over these microchips. And they can help amplify signals and, and cut off other signals. So a microchip is like a 
a circuit, but not just one, but many circuits. So there's many circuits on a microchip, and it makes sort of your basic electronics work. All most of your basic electronics have these microchips in them, because if without them, they wouldn't be able to perform the functions. Otherwise, it would take too much space. Right, so these microchips are lots of circuits in a small chip, and these small chips you can find, for example, in cameras or printers or similar things. And then we also have a microprocessor, and a microprocessor is more or less a microchip, but a bit more complex, right? So a microchip often has to just perform relatively simple tasks, like for example, taking a a, a camera photo. So, I mean, it's simple in relative terms. It's still quite complex, but still relatively overall compared to the sort of task the microprocessor has to do. Overall, relatively simple. Because, for example, if you look, this is our this was an AMD. So this is a um, central processing unit CPU. You know, computers have this. Their motherboards they have these CPUs to make sure they can actually run. So you can imagine what a computer has to do, right? A computer has to be able to have all these different types of applications. So these might be the purple ones might be different types of applications. They would have to be able to run different types of programs. They would have to be able to, you know, maybe even some maths, lots of maths actually. Computers have to do lots of maths, constant maths, they have to calculate a lot. They are much more logical than simply your microchips. There's more lot more logic involved. A lot more thinking involved when it comes to microprocessors. So they're basically the brain, right? So they're more the logical side. But also on the microprocessor, one of these chips here, you're going to find billions of, of transistors, right? So all these green dots are meant to be your transistors. So they're all over these microprocessors as well. And they, again, they, they perform the same function. They make sure that we have all these being connected. So these dots are being connected. They make sure that we can amplify signals that we're meant to amplify. They make sure that we can switch off other signals, switch on and switch off other signals that we want or don't want. Right? So without these transistors, we wouldn't be able to make these many connections between different types of programs, which are on one of these tiny chips. And these tiny chips are absolutely important when it comes to everyday equipment, because, for example, your computer has your CPU in it, your smartphone they have to, it has to do so many logical functions, it would have a microprocessor in it, um, and without that, it wouldn't simply work. And beforehand, before we had the, the microprocessors and the actual transistors, we had the thermion devices, which meant that this computer had to do similar functions, but it, just because it was much bigger and much less efficient, it basically its power was less than a simple smartphone is nowadays. For this top one, what you should know is you should know the impact that transistors had on society, which again has is massive because they make these modern electronics possible. But you should also know that we use, for example, your microchips for things like you know computers by by in integrating different types of circuits, by making all these simple circuits come together in one sort of integrated circuit, and that that's in a small chip form, which we can then put into a, our camera, for example. And the microprocessors are a bit more complicated and a bit more complex. They have more of these applications, these calculations, calculation applications and programs that your computer would have to run. But the same principle here, transistors help to make sure that we can connect all these different programs together to make sure that it works fine and smooth. Right? So without your transistors, both your microchip and your microprocessors wouldn't be working and we wouldn't have all of the electronics we have today. So that's basically the gist of this actual dot point. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.